Looking to take your financial knowledge to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to Ask Ralph. Offering accounting, technical, and financial advice. Whether you're looking to save taxes or improve your business, he's got you covered. Here's your host of Ask Ralph, Ralph Eastup Jr. Hello and welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. If you've joined us before, welcome back. If you've never joined us, I want to say thank you for joining us. You can go find out more about the Ask Ralph Show by going to our website at askralph.com. You can also go back and listen to our podcast. Like We've done a ton of these now, so hopefully there'll be something of interest to you. Well, today I'm going to talk about something that is pretty much in my face on a daily basis right now during what we call tax season, and that is the big refund debate. Is it better for your wallet to get a tax refund or nothing at all? Now, I will tell you, when I first started my practice several years ago, as a young whippersnapper accountant, I had this grandiose belief that I was going to impress upon my clients that they wanted to get the smallest refund possible because that was the maximization of their financial situation. Well, I tried that at first. And then what I realized is there are most definitely two schools of thought in this. And, you know, after a while of trying to convince people that it was better to not get much or anything of a refund as compared to a big refund, I finally gave up and I said, you know what? The bottom line is that there are really two schools of thought on this. And it goes down like this. And it took me some time to really understand this. And it's something that everyone needs to understand, I think. When you get a tax refund, there's nothing miraculous about that. Now, that being said, you could qualify for credit. You could qualify for for different things like that. But in general, it really comes down to if you're getting a refund, it's because you've paid that money in throughout the year. So you've effectively overpaid. So what happens at the end of the year now is you're getting a refund of the money that you paid in that was too much. And when it's too much, that's when you get a refund. Well, here's the issue with that. And a great example of that is, let's say, for example, that you've got your withholding set at the maximum. So you've done like single zero for us in the in the industry. We'd say, you know, you got your W-4 form. We said, okay, we're going to do a single zero. So they're going to take out the maximum based on your earnings and your degree of earnings, okay? But here's the problem with that. Let's say, though, by the time you get ready to file your tax return, you really do have some deductions. Let's say you may have a couple children. You may be married. Maybe your wife is not working. Well, you've been withholding at this higher rate all year long. Well, guess what? You've basically given the IRS an interest-free loan. Now, that in general terms isn't a big deal. But let's say that you're one of those people who carries a credit card balance. That's what I try to impress upon my clients. So you've got a credit card out there that you're using, and you're not able to pay it off every month. Well, that you're incurring interest in that. It's actually costing you money. So you'd be better off to just go ahead and get the money as you go rather than, you know, waiting to the end of the year. Now, I, I will tell you, a lot of people will come back with the position of, well, Ralph, you know, if I don't do that, then I never save money. And for those people, I have to agree Then maybe getting the big refunds, the best way to go. You know, that may be the only way they're able to save that lump sum, you know, and it may be something as simple as like, you know, they get paid every week and they throw an extra $20 in their federal withholding. Yeah, that equates to $1,000 in a year, give or take. And that may be the only way they're able to ever accomplish that $1,000 in savings. But it really, intellectually, you need to understand that this is your money. And you are foregoing earning any interest on that money. So if you're paying credit card debt, if you're paying a home equity loan, if you're paying a car loan, anything that you're paying that you're incurring interest charges for by over withholding, it's costing you money. You know, and that's where a lot of people consider, you know, their tax refund as uh, like a Christmas club. I remember when I when I ran a credit union in Newark, we had these things called Christmas club. And I remember when I was first starting, I was pretty young and I I didn't really understand the benefit of a Christmas club. To me, it's like, okay, well, can't you just save money in your savings account? And then when Christmas comes around, use it. But the Christmas club was really something different than that. And the Christmas club was a recognition that, hey, you know, come November, December, I'm going to need to buy Christmas gifts. So we're going to start off in January and start, you know, socking some money into this Christmas 
club fund. Well, if you think about it, a tax refund is nothing more than a Christmas club. The only difference between the two, though, is the IRS isn't going to cut you a check for interest, and the Christmas club will. So if you find yourself in that same position, you know, maybe one of the things you would better to do, well, that sounded awkward, one of the things you'd better off if you, wow, we're really struggling today, my friends, but one of the things you'd better, you'd be better off doing, there we go, I got it finally, would be to put that money into a savings account where they actually pay you interest. Now, the truth of the matter is, let's be practical, savings accounts aren't paying that much right now, but they're at least paying something. And, you know, here's an example I found online. It says, this is referring to somebody, she's also not missing out on much, she reasons. Her tax refunds this year was $683. If she had deposited $57 a month last year into a savings account and received a 2% return in a high-yielding online account, she would have made $8 in interest over the year. Now, again, that's a decision you have to make. So you're going to make $8 by putting away $57 a month. But you've got to have discipline to do it. It's like it talks about here. You know, this article, I don't remember where this article came from. Somebody printed it out and handed it to me, but um, it says originally published on March 13th, 6.30 a.m. But, you know, is it worth the peace of mind knowing that, you know, when you get those credit card bills, you know, this is what, it's kind of funny you think about it. You know, we do our tax filing season and a lot of people start their filing in February. Well, that's about the same time that you're getting those credit card bills in. And if you haven't saved all year, you know, that $8 in interest might not seem like much because now you don't have that money. There's also this whole thing about excitement about tax refunds. And and I've literally had people in my office jump up and down Like they had just hit the lottery and I do my little chuckle on the inside and I think, wow, you're so excited that you're getting a huge refund. And you know, it's great to give them that. I mean, it's great to be able to calculate that for them. But the truth of the matter is it's their own money, you know, and it's a nice treat. Sure. But from a financial standpoint, it doesn't make too much sense. And that's really what we're talking about is a financial versus behavioral. So, you know what, in the end, you know, I've learned over time, you know, you got you to do what you think is best. And I'm not, I'm not going to argue with people anymore when they ask, you know, hey, Ralph, I want to make sure I get a big refund. Because, you know, of course, there's the other side of this, and then some people just don't want to owe. You know, so it is like a fire insurance. But just remember, and this is the bottom line to this, I'm going to end this, this particular discussion about this, is, you know, there is a cost by letting the IRS use your money and them not paying you any interest. You know, you could be incurring additional costs. I hope this was helpful talking about the big refund debate. You've been listening to Ask Ralph, brought to you by Sazio Accounting Plus. Please subscribe to and write our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. Our podcast is produced by Carolyn Peters. Thank you for listening and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Ask Ralph Media. You can also hear me each week on 1450 WILM and on 1410 WDOV in Delaware and on the iHeartRadio app. Submit your questions or ideas for future shows by sending an email to Ask Ralph at AskRalph.com. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Sagio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.